You probably already know by now that Final Cut Pro now has built-in tracking, but what you might not know is these five ways to use the built-in tracking feature. I'm also going to show you the difference between the machine learning and point cloud tracking methods, so stick around to find out more about that. Let me show you how to track an object in Final Cut Pro using the built-in tracker by showing you the first way to use it, which is for color grading. I want to track this yellow boat, and in order to do so, I'm going to scroll down on my inspector window, and there's a new little section here called trackers. I'll click on this little plus icon, and there I have a tracking box. It's really easy to use, simply just move it and resize it until you've got it over the object that you want to track. You can also round the edges out using this little dot in the corner, and you can rotate it as well if you need to. Something like that should do. Next, you need Final Cut Pro to analyze this clip for tracking. So you can either analyze backwards or forwards, or if you click analyze, it will analyze forwards and backwards for this entire shot. So I'll click analyze, and this is Final Cut doing the track in real time. As you can see, it's super fast. It's a lot faster than some of the third party trackers I've used. And just like that, it's done. If I scrub through here, you can see it did a pretty good job of tracking that boat. One thing I like to do to stay organized is to come over to this track, double click it and just rename it boat. If you're doing a lot of tracking, this will help you to stay organized. I'm going to click done and then I'm going to go ahead and add a color wheels adjustment here because I want to darken this water and at the same time keep the boat as the focal point of the shot. With my color wheels added, I'll simply go and add a shape mask. And right now the shape and the tracker are linked and you can see so with that little icon there. I'll just go over to my tracker. I'll select boat. And then you'll see the tracker we've got over here and this is the shape mask. Now I want this to link, so I'm going to hit link and this will conform my shape mask to the tracker. If you want it to be separate, you can obviously unlink them, which I'll do now because I'm going to make some changes to the shape mask and I don't want to affect the tracker. Looking at the shape mask down here underneath the color wheels, you have an inside and an outside mask. I'll start with the outside mask, which will be all this water here. And I'm going to darken this a little bit, probably saturate it somewhat. And maybe I'll pull the highlights over towards this pinky blue color, just so we get the sense of a bright sunset happening in the background. This is what the shot looked like before. And this is what the shot looks like now after we've tracked this color grade to the boat. The second way to use the tracking feature is to track text. You can track a simple basic title or a title template, but I'm also going to show you a quick trick to make track titles look even better. For this one, instead of a basic title, I'm going to add a subtle title to this shot. It comes with Final Cut Pro, so you don't have to download anything. And I'm going to change this text to Art by Anna. I'll make the font Hmm, something like that should do. I'll set the size to 100, reposition this slightly, and then I'm going to go ahead and change the color here to match this eye. And the glow color I will set to her arm here. And then in terms of the build in and build out, you've got a bunch of different options. For this example, I'm just going to set the build in and out to puff, and then you'll see what happens. This text just kind of fades in like that, looks really cool. So I'm going to go add a new tracker. I'll resize this and I'll grab something with a lot of contrast. So the corner of this eye here should do and I'll hit analyze. Final Cut Pro analyzes in both directions and then we've got a track. I'll rename this wall and I'll hit done. Then I'll go over to my title. I'll click on the transform properties. I've got this new little tracker option here. If I click that, it'll create a new track but what I'm going to do instead is click the drop down arrow and hit wall. And I'm going to reposition this, maybe even rotate it slightly and hit done. Another thing to be aware of if the track kind of drifts or wiggles is that you're tracking the position and the rotation generally by default. So what I like to do in a shot like this, I don't need to track the rotation of this part of the eye. I just want to track the position. You can head over to transform, click on this little drop down and uncheck rotation. And lastly, before I play this back, here is the little trick I was talking about. If I zoom into this clip, you can see that the text looks pretty smooth compared to the background. That's because we're adding text, which is super sharp onto something that might not be as sharp. 
In order to make it blend a little better, you can head over to your effects window, search for noise, and then you can add a noise plugin to this title. I like to change the type from TV static to white noise, and you can drop it down just a little bit, and this will give you some realistic grain just to help this title fit into your scene a little bit better. If you want to be a certified like button smasher, then you can do that right now by hitting, whacking or smashing that like button. And YouTube tells me that 81% of the people watching my videos aren't subscribed. So please go ahead and subscribe if you find these tutorials useful. I'd really appreciate that. The third way to use the object tracker is to censor or blur out objects. In this example, let's say I want to blur this woman's face. I can simply head over to my effects browser drag and drop the sensory effect onto her face and you'll see that Final Cut Pro has identified this as a face. So I'll drop the effect on there and then I'll go ahead and analyze this clip. Final Cut Pro does a really good job of tracking her face in both directions and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlink the tracker from the shape and on the shape I'm going to just go and reduce this feathering right here, something like that and I'm going to drop the amount of pixelation, probably something like that. There are actually a bunch of different effects in the effects browser that you can drag and drop onto your clip and Final Cut Pro will determine whether it's an object or a face or something like that, making it really easy to track. The fourth way to use the built-in tracker is to add a logo. In this example, I want to add this Bat Skull surfboard logo to the surfboard, but first I'm going to just scale this clip up so that once it's tracked, we can see it a little bit better. And I need to track something with high contrast. And since there's not a lot of contrast on the surfboard at all, I struggle to get a decent track. In situations like this, this is when changing the tracking method will really help. So if you have a look at the analysis method, you have four different options. Machine learning is great for tracking common objects like animals, cars, faces, that sort of thing. And the machine learning method can also track an object that passes behind another object. So for example, if you're trying to track a car that passes behind a tree, the machine learning method can continue tracking the car on the other side of that tree. The point cloud method is great when you need to precisely track specific pixels in the frame. If you're trying to track something that's relatively flat, meaning it doesn't turn or rotate in 3D space, then the point cloud method is a great option. Combined will use a combination of the machine learning and point clouds methods to track an object and Automatic will allow Final Cut Pro to choose what it thinks is the best method. 95% of the time, your best bet will probably be to leave the tracking method set to Automatic, but if you need to change it, you can. For this example, I had to switch to the point cloud method for the best results. And what I did is I tracked this little dirty mark on the surfboard over here. So I'll zoom in so we can have a closer look at that. And then I'll resize my tracking box here and I'll just rotate it a little bit so that it just covers this mark. I'll hit analyze, I'll set my viewer back to fit, hit done and I'll bring my logo in and on the logo I'm going to hit the transform button over here, the drop down arrow on tracker. I didn't name the track this time which I should have done but I'll click on object track, that's the track we just made and then I'm going to scale this down something like that and I'll rotate it slightly and reposition it here in the center. Next, I want to make sure that this blends in with the scene a bit, so I'm going to change the blend mode from normal to multiply. And then, like we did with the text earlier, I'll zoom in, and I'm going to add the noise effect just to help this blend in a little bit more. I'll change the type to white noise, and I'll drop the amount a little bit. And now we have a nicely tracked logo on the surfboard. The fifth way to track in Final Cut Pro is to isolate an object. If you're trying to emphasize or point out a specific object in a shot, like this red car for example, here's an easy way to do it. I've already tracked this car, you can see so over here. And what I'm going to do is add a color wheels adjustment to this clip. And I'm going to add a shape mask to that color wheels adjustment. I'll click on the down arrow here by my tracker and I'll select car. So what I'll do is select the tracker, hit link so that my shape mask conforms to that track and then I'm going to head over to shape and I'm going to reduce the feathering of that shape mask. Then on the inside of that shape mask, I'm going to just brighten up that car a little bit. And on the outside, I'm going to drop the brightness so that everything other than this car gets darkened. I'm also going to desaturate it completely so that we can really emphasize this car. 
Then the next step is to duplicate this clip. So I'll do that using Alt. I'll just Alt click and drag to make a copy of this clip on top of itself. And on the bottom clip, I want to go ahead and delete this color wheels effect. Then on the top clip, you can select that and hit Command T to create a cross dissolve at the beginning and the end of the clip. And this is what that looks like. Remember, you need to make sure that you're running at least version 10.6 of Final Cut Pro and macOS Big Sur in order to see this tracking feature. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and hit that notification bell and feel free to shoot some tutorial suggestions in the comments down below. I'll see you in the next one.